you're destined to be a CPA? Well, I blame it on an uh, uh, individual growing in high school. Uh. There was a school auditor was in, and you know, for a couple weeks, and this boy that I knew growing up with, he said, "Yeah, they make a lot of money. They make a lot of money." So I kind of went that direction, not because I didn't have any, any idea of what I wanted to do. And he went also for uh, accounting, but only stayed two years and then got out and changed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's Greg Leonard. <laughs> oh, Greg. Yeah. Yeah. So are you from the area here? Frisburg. Yeah. Frisburg. So you went to Robert H. Jackson Elementary School? Yes, yes. What did they teach you, if anything, about Robert H. Jackson? You know, Greg, I, I don't recall if they did teach us anything at all. I, I, I really don't. That's going way back, of course. Yeah. But I just remember... The name, I was impressed with the name. I guess I must have understood who Mr. Jackson was at that point in time growing up. But no kind of class or civics thing which sort of said you all went into the auditorium and spent a day talking about him? Not that I recall. And I don't even recall in um, high school if they did that. And you graduated from obviously Frisburg High Frisburg, School? yeah. What year? 79. Oh my gosh. And. Um, uh, so where was your career path after that? College? Uh, I went to JCC, took the basic courses, some accounting courses, and transferred over to St. Bonaventure. Got my degree there, mm -hmm. and then worked for a while up in uh, when oil and gas was big here in the, the area. Worked for a, a firm up there, um, and then. Get all in. Excuse me. Where did you work for the oil and gas? Up in Westfield. Oh, Westfield, okay. Yeah. And was, was, did you work with Jack Beckman? At all? He had an attorney in Westfield. A gentleman, kind of tall. Oh, yeah. glass. Yes, I remember him. Jack, Jack Beckman, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was, and then I, I did a little stint at uh, Cummins Engine. Mm -hmm. And then Bill and Bob were uh, hiring, looking for employ employees, and that was in 85, so I, that's when this I... This was McCoyack, Moore, and Maya? This was Coppings, Johnson, McCoyack, and Maya. Ah. <laughs> and then Bob Moore came on board in 85. Okay. So, and I've been... I was with them until 2000. 2000. Then I had a, um, you know, mid-year... Midlife crisis and went down to the Washington D.C. area, okay. Alexandria for a year. So I was there in 2020, 20, 20, for one year, and that's when, of course, 9/11 occurred. And I was up here at the time. You know, I still had my house. I came back for the weekend, and I was ready to leave. And my neighbor next door—I didn't have a TV or anything in the house. My neighbor next door saw me packing to come back, and she said, "You better check out what's going on in the world in Washington." And you know, so I, I just decided to probably the best decision is just to come back home. So I moved back in 20, uh, 2002. And is that is that about the time? Let's see, that's more in my time period, right? Yes. Did you come back and work with those guys? Well, I went up to Fredon the, the Fredonia office. Ah. Bill and Bob were still with the. Uh, uh, McCoyack and Johnson at that time, so I worked up there driving back and forth for four years. And then Bill and Bob eventually split from them, and I just, I didn't tell them I had left up there, but they found out, so uh, they rehired me. Okay. And that was in, oh, 2006, 2007. And Bill passes away. Yeah, Bill and Bob, they sold uh, their for the firm to myself and Cindy Saxton. And then unfortunately, Bill passed away soon after that. Oh, but that's right. Yeah, with, I think within six months. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Bob Moore is still out and about occasionally. Does Indeed. he come in? He has not been in in uh, probably about a year and a half now. So. Hey, I got a couple emails this, this week, just an aside from Bob, who uh, was really one of the first accountants uh, not the first accountant for the Jackson Center when we got started. Eh? And you know, Bob muses about things, and he was musing about justice and rule of law, and his, you know, wants to talk about a variety of things. So he's still, the, the gray cells are still engaged. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah. That's great. So 
you've been really, you know, when I, our paths have crossed are two locations, usually some not-for-profit or the ballpark. And you'd be there along the first base grandstand, mm -hmm. reading a book, enjoying the ambience. Tell me about you and baseball. Well, I, I remember when the Expos were in town and mm -hmm. uh, probably growing up in high school and going to some games. And then eventually I moved here to Jamestown and you know, I didn't, not you know, being single, <laughs> no obligations, no children, no pets. You know, I just like going to the baseball games and enjoying you know, with the action and reading in between the action. <laughs> But uh, you know, baseball was very important growing up to me. I'm a big Orioles fan. Um, unfortunately, uh, at least they had a winning season this year. Year this year. Yeah. So it's it's always been very important to me baseball, whether it's uh, you know a local team or a, a, a national team. Well, and your firm got us on the right straight and narrow when we created the most recent iteration, the Jamestown Community Baseball the Jamestown Tarp Skunks, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. again, there's the Rob Coker influence on it. Well, <laughs> that's more of a, uh, my partner, Cindy Saxon, takes yeah. care of that. Yeah, but I, you were the first call. Um, so, but I know we're here to talk a little bit about you f involvement with the Robert Jackson Center, and did that come initially professionally? Were you do we assign, did you do any accounting for them or auditing? I did not, and I don't, I, do, I think at that time our firm had not been doing any work for them, but I was approached by uh, Randy Sweeney, which, who was the treasurer, I believe, at that time, and I think his term was up or he wanted to retire. Um, and then and Sue Murphy, who was the executive, executive director at that time, and I think this was 2017, mm -hmm. and I didn't know what was going on. Randy just invited me to lunch. and. You know, I'm not going to say no to Randy, of course. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they sat, I sat down with him and Sue and we discussed, well, do you want to come on board and be the treasurer? And, you know, I said, sure, I'd like to do that. Did you know anything about us beforehand? Had you done any little due diligence? Uh, probably not. I, I, I don't recall. I maybe have attended one or two of the programs uh, uh, before, but I really didn't know the inner workings of the organization. And now you do. So you had one experience, and I tried, don't know if it predated this or not, but it was uh, at Chautauqua mm -hmm. Institution. And um, do you remember the story? Um, I don't remember. It was an evening event. Um, I don't recall who the... David McCullough. David McCullough, who wrote uh, many great books, many great books, unfortunately just recently passed away. Um, so anyway, I was there and I was sitting on the outside mm -hmm. where they have like the little bleacher area and of course minding my own business and here comes uh, yourself and I, I don't remember if your wife was with you but you brought uh, the justice, I do not recall his name. Kennedy. Kennedy. And evidently all the seats down in the amphitheater were full, so they needed a place to sit. I had a little, most people bring a cushion. I bring a, a beach towel with me and just fold it up and use that for sitting. And Greg being who you are asked me if I would give up my soft peach blanket for the justice to sit on. And I was more than willing to do that. And uh, yeah, I just a little, little more a color to it all. Um, Kennedy was up uh, as a speaker, but also his granddaughter was in a ballet class at Chautauqua. And so it was a rainy night. It was a misty night. Mm -hmm. And um, there was the justice and his wife I saw, because we were sitting in the cheap seats in the back, and you and I, and I saw him, because he had, had scheduled to come to the Jackson Center that afternoon, but his marshals came and said to drop off an autographed book, which we have at the Jackson Center. And I go, oh my gosh, it's the justice of the United States. You know, I can't get a seat. And uh, you were, uh, and there were two uh, seats in front of us in the cheap seat area, you know, the, yes. which are just metal seats. But it was wet. 
and you know, it's just because it had that mist on it. And uh, uh, you were prevailed upon, and it was a great sport to give it up for the justice and his wife who came and sat with us. Yes. I mean, this was beyond, because I went up, so then I now felt, I'm, I felt I'm confident that I could go up and reintroduce myself. I just briefly had met him before and said, you know, we do have seats, and I do have this, or at least you could sit on, and uh, you were gracious enough to put it out and then sit on the same seats. Mm -hmm. We had to sit on the metal seats. And the justice sat there during most of the presentation of David McCullough, only to have it returned uh, to you. And I don't know what you did with the box. Well, it's over in the safe deposit box in the bank. No, not really. <laughs> That's our, kind of our little standing joke. So. <laughs> <laughs> and some, someday if it's on eBay, <laughs> if I see G. Peterson bidding on it. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the butt print of a uh, beach towel, of, and I can authenticate it. I can, yes. I, I can yeah. make the providence of it all. Yeah, you know, there's been some other very strange items that people desire, so <laughs> someday, who knows? So that's the Rob Coker moment. So now, you were there uh, in 2017, and um, uh, that was soon the beginning, of, or in, in the middle of the Susan Murphy time period. What did you learn about us? I mean, what was kind of, you probably have the best perspective, not only looking at the economics, but an understanding how, it, how this all worked coming in from the outside. Mm -hmm. You're not biased like a guy like me saying, well, in the beginning, and therefore you, What'd you learn? Yeah, I guess you probably think of a lot of organizations, oh, oh, they're well off. But the Jackson Center is unique, at least in this area, because we, you're not supported by government grants or contracts. Um, there's no state funding, per se. It's all dependent upon you know, individuals. And you know, we have numerous funds over the various community foundations locally and one out in Erie, which provides our funding. Um, so I was very surprised that, you know, it's for what the organization does on this very limited amount of funding from year to year. But I'm always impressed that somehow every year we're, we manage to, to make it. <laughs> were there programs, I know you, by being uh, an officer over there, were there programs that you attended that were kind of maybe memorable? Do you remember? Oh my. I remember the one who was the 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 daughters of the Japanese Koromatsu. Karen Koromatsu. Yes, and I just thought that was so fascinating. I remember that one and the one on the the two uh, girls, the Jehovah Witnesses, in the whole thing with the pledge of allegiance, and you know you just look back and says, wow, this you know this happened years and years ago, but it still impacts our lives today. You know whether we know it or not. Yeah. And from that all, Rob, you're gonna get a sense of kind of sense of mission or kind of sense where kind of the Jackson Center may may plug into our not only our community but maybe in our region as well. Yeah. Well, of course, with everything that's going on the in the Ukraine, you know, I don't know how war trials come about, but you know, I. You know, that's, of course, with the connection with Jackson and being the, uh, the judge at the Nuremberg Trials. Um, I think people need to recognize, you know, terrible things happen in the world and there needs to be some type of system, law and order to, you know, bring people to justice and to do what's right, to make the world a better place. So I'm hoping that's what the, the center can do. And I hope it can becomes more relevant to not only the individuals in our community, but in the United States and in the world. Which is the mission, certainly, that now under the leadership of Kristen McMahon, uh, they are taking on a, uh, well, not that we haven't, but uh, we've been, now they're focused on more on the broader justice questions, as opposed to the sort of biographical Jackson, mm -hmm. what did he do, Korematsu, Barnett, you know, Youngstown Steel and stuff like that, which is important. But you kind of step on those shoulders and, and, and go up. Mm -hmm. I think definitely, you, I think, definitely. I think you've nailed it. Um, so is your, your, well now you're retired from the Jackson <laughs> Center board. Uh, and 
do you, do you remember any sort of personalities or anything sort of stories that are kind of unique from your perspective uh, that we should oh, I, I don't really remember anything so specific but I just have been very impressed by the individuals that have served on the board and within the organization throughout the years and I was always a little bit intimidated by these individuals, whether they're lawyers, uh, uh, judges, profess professors. You know, we've had a wonderful array of individuals that have served on the board. And again, I've always been uh, impressed by their passion and their desire for this center. Which includes you, your passion and, and interest. In, uh, and uniquely so, because you kind of came out from an op, you know, literally the, uh, as a spectator, uh, kind of using the analogy we did at Chautauqua. I mean, you were, next thing you know, you're, you're handing over your blanket. Next thing you know, you are involved in some of the justice activities mm -hmm. that are going on at the Jackson Center. And uh, uh, it was really well appreciated. So okay. thank well, you. It's been a wonderful experience. And thank you, Greg, for everything that you have done, of course, being one of the, the founders of the center. You know, you're to be applauded for that.